What's mobbing with it, man? Hallelujah. God bless y'all in Jesus' name. We're going to get straight to it. 2 Corinthians chapter 4, verse 17. For this light momentary affliction is preparing a weight of glory beyond all comparison. I know that I paraphrased the end of that, man. My apologies. But, uh, man, let's really tap in and understand what that is saying and what that means. Is we need to be focused on. On the glory of Christ and what is to come for us and what awaits us. Not worried about right now as far as the moment that we're going through right now. The affliction that we are facing right now when it comes to being persecuted for the gospel's sake. Long suffering for the gospel's sake. You know, whatever it is, let us not focus on that moment. Let us not fix our eyes and just even our thoughts and our emotions. Let us not just be stuck within that moment, but let us go through it with joy and a peace that surpasses understanding and understanding what awaits for us beyond here. We know that everything as far as right now within what we go through out here as far as on earth, we have so much more waiting for us. Let us focus on what awaits us and not what we are going through now. And I say that because, excuse me, sometimes we seldom realize how selfish and how arrogant we can be during the moments of affliction. Whether we're being persecuted, whether it's some suffering, you know, whatever it may be, we can find ourselves being very prideful in the moment and almost beginning to do, you know, the, the woe is me. And I can't believe I'm going through this at this time or when we're faced with a, you know, a storm or whatever it may be in that moment. Sometimes we can begin to find ourselves um, complaining. But we have to understand if we look at those who came before us and understanding even like like Paul, Paul is a great an exa is a great example. Like none of us are inviting pain or suffering or whatever we may go through for the sake of gospel in our life. But if we truly look at Paul, he was a great and ex an excellent example, honestly, of an individual who was fully prepared for whatever came with preaching and proclaiming the gospel of Jesus Christ to the point unto death. And we need to be very mindful of that. Like he was an excellent example. And so let us not focus at times when we are stuck in the moment of an affliction. Because it's going to be for a moment. It may be for a season. It's not going to be forever. But let us focus on what awaits us. The eternal glory that surpasses understanding. Like, let us truly focus on that, man. Let us consecrate ourselves in prayer during these moments of affliction. And let us truly posture ourselves in a manner of worship as we are going through these things, understanding what awaits us. Let us do it in such a way that people ask questions. Let us do it in such a way that is honoring to what awaits us. Let us be grateful. And that's something, just being transparent, I'll be honest with y'all. That's something I've truly been thanking the Lord for lately. And just being grateful and worshiping the Father to understand that, man, I have such a, a blessed life. Regardless of what I've been through, regardless of my past, you know, even the times that I've fell short, I have such a blessed life and such a great life. And I'm real life living a dream. I'm living a dream out. And I say that because I know that at times it, it may seem it may sound cliche as believers, but let's think about it. Like we should be thankful and grateful and joyful for the opportunity that we get to jump in God's word and grow closer to our Lord and Savior. Even through prayer, even through fellowship, even in the manner that we have that we have family, like the body of Christ. I can honestly say this, like being being a gang member and coming from that demographic and that, you know, I never had, I would say, biological family in in a sense. Like everything was either tied into the streets as far as what I saw or what I felt to be my family. So when when I gave my life to Christ, when, when God chose me, I didn't chose God. When God chose me, 
And I submitted and surrendered my life unto Christ and the family that I got within the body of Christ and understanding what, what I received. I didn't understand it at first as far as have that full grasp of it. Like I used to complain during afflictions and even now I'll be transparent. Sometimes I'll be tired or if I go through a moment of for the sake of been on, you know, a bunch of flights traveling or whatever. And you know what I'm saying? I, I find myself being impatient or frustrated due to a longer wait than was expected or whatever. I got to check myself and truly repent to the father and ask for forgiveness because at the end of the day, this is what I signed up for, especially in what God has gifted me to be able to do. And I say it's a gift because at the end of the day, it is truly a gift and a blessing from the father to be able to travel the country and even go outside the country for the sake of proclaiming the gospel. But then even for the father to for the father to be able to meet your needs financially for you to take care of your your household, your family, your bills, you know, whatever it may be. So I always look at this and I want to remind myself and posture myself in a way that any time I'm ever facing affliction, persecution, long suffering, a storm, whatever it is that I don't find myself in the area of being angry, frustrated or whatever it may be, because in all reality, there's somebody else out there right now that would give anything just to be in your shoes, to bask in that moment and to be able to have that responsibility they would they would cherish it they would honor it so much better than you do so i have to check myself and thank god that in the moment and even when it comes to these scriptures and remembering these things are moment like these are for a moment and at the end of the day truly understanding that these things can truly be not just a blessing but truly change our perspective and the narrative of the way that we handle our business if we understand and place the scriptures in front of us and allow them to guide us in the manner that they are here for. So with that being said, man, don't don't be swayed and don't be moved and don't focus on this moment that you may be going through some affliction. But always focus and seek the kingdom first and think what ahead is like like think what awaits you think about the glory think about eternal life think like what awaits you and allow that to be what you focus on through them times love y'all man god bless y'all in jesus name hallelujah